All right. So Indian literature. So once you said Indian literature, just like the Philippine literature, it also circles or it rin ay umiikot sa paniniwala o sa relihiyon na meron ang mga Indiano or ang mga Bumbay. So Indian literature also circles with uh, with their beliefs and their religion. So the discussion of Indian literature is also the discussion for the introduction of Hinduism. So for those who have no uh, information regarding Hinduism, uh, Hinduism actually it is uh, the major religion in India. Next to that is the Buddhism. For those humanities and social science students, I know they know about this because they have, they have a module about this uh, last semester regarding the world religion. Hinduism and Buddhism is one of the seven major religions in the world. They are second, uh, they are third to Christianity, which is our religion. So uh, the discussion of, again, the discussion of Indian literature is also the discussion of the introduction of the Hinduism religion. So I guess all of you have watched The Three Idiots. This is a film wherein it talks about being a human being. Okay. Next up is um, the, uh, for the Indians, there are only uh, three characteristics of being a human being. And what are those? That is um, having a balance, having a connectivity, and weight. So, uh, balance, connectivity, and weight. These are the uh, these are the most important things that a human being must have. That is according to the teachings of Hinduism. Later on, we will discuss one by one regarding these characteristics of the, of their way of living or for the Indians. Next one, uh, in terms of literature for the Indians. It focuses on duality, meaning on your, on two sides. Okay, once you said the duality of literature, meaning it, uh, the writings or the literary piece from the Indias focuses on two sides. First one, uh, and what does duality mean? It means, first one, it means that it, the difference between joy, innate, and happiness or gain. It is not logical. You can't compare things or something that you haven't experienced yet. So what's the meaning of, uh, what's the difference of joy and happiness? Once we say joy, ito yung, uh, ito yung kusa mong nararamdaman sa puso mo. Okay? Tap, pero once we say the happiness, ito yung bagay na, na nakuha mo or ginusto mo at nakuha mo. At alam mong magbibigay ng kasiyahan sa iyo. So, kung baga, halimbawa, kung uh, gusto mong magka-cellphone, you work for it because uh, that's what you want. So, basically, once you have that phone, that would be your happiness. Itong happiness na to, maaaring mawala anytime. Depende kung, kung gaano tatagal yung bagay na nakuha mo. Pero yung joy for the Hinduism, Joy is something that we have in our heart. We're in the joy is this is uh, a feeling that we won't be able to uh, we won't be able to. I'm uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, not want. This is a feeling that we will always have in our hearts, no matter what happens. That is joy. And sabi pa dito, you cannot compare something that you haven't experienced yet. Which is true. Para ano rin yan, hindi, mo, hindi, ka, hindi ka pwedeng mag-share or mag-advise sa friend mo na broken-hearted kung ikaw mismo ay hindi pa nagka-jowa. Di ba? Parang ganun rin naman yun. So meaning, you cannot say something if you haven't experienced it. Okay? Hambawa, hindi mo masasabing maganda ang iPhone 12 kung hindi mo pa na-experience magkaroon ng iPhone 12. That is the uh, meaning of uh, of this statement. So that, that is the duality. Okay, here it is now. This is what we call the uh, difference of, oh sorry, the 
at least a brief discussion of the characteristics of the way of living for the Indians. Una una, we have the balance. Once we said balance, this is having uh, two kinds. The, it means structured, either uh, balance would either be structured or accepted. Once we said structured balance, it means that you are balancing something based on the difference of two object. Halimbawa, girl or boy. Diba? Magka, ano sila, magkaiba sila. Pero, they are, again, they are giving balance to the world. Ano pa? Day and night. They are of two different, uh, two different uh, uh, categories, but they are giving balance sa ating earth. Okay? So, anything that has, uh, that, that has, uh, exact contradiction with one another. That's why we call it an structured balance. And once we see the accepted balance, this is how you accept the difference. Okay? It's how you go into the differences to take balance. Kung parang, uh, you must accept na not all at all times magiging masaya ka. Not at all times magiging, magiging uh, maganda yung pakikitungan tao sa'yo. May mga pagkakataon na magiging malungkot ka o may mga pagkakataon din na yung ibang tao ay, mag, ay mag, magsasalita ng something against to you. You must accept it because we are human being. That's why we call it the balance. Okay? Next, uh, the balance as well focuses on the Indian idea of duality which we have discussed a while ago. And duality, it's double, dual, meaning it... Uh, <laughs> It is actually uh, getting into the discussion of social uh, characteristics and philosophical characteristics. Once you said social characteristics, ito yung pagkakaiba-iba ng tao base sa kanyang estado. O for, the, for the Indians, they called it as the case system. And philosophical, these are the teachings. And there are two teachings in... Uh, there are two teachings in in uh, in India. As I mentioned a while ago, the, the, the teachings of, in India comes from the religion that they are believing to. And th these are Hinduism and Buddhism. Ang Hinduism class, this is the major religions in India. Kung saan ang Buddhism, siya ay nagmula sa Hinduism. Kung baga, nabuo yung Buddhism dahil sa Hinduism. But Buddhism also has a different uh, teaching. It's somehow the same, almost the same as Hinduism. But there are other things that it differs from Hinduism. Basta, uh, tandaan, ang, ang, ang Buddhism ay nanggaling sa Hinduism. But they are both one of the seven religions of the world and they are both religions in uh, in uh, in the country of India. So, but the major religion is India again. It is the Hinduism. Okay. Next one is the weight. Weight is the heavy and light. What does it mean? Hindi siya yung bigat ng hinahawakan natin or yung gano'ng hinahawakan natin. Once we said weight, the heaviness or the lightness of your personality, of your behavior, of your attitude as a person. Ano yun? Kung, gano ka, kung ano ka bilang tao, yun ang weight. Heavy weight, uh, heavy personality means, uh, meaning, Maaaring ikaw yung tipo ng tao na mahirap lapitan. Maaaring ikaw yung tao na kuripot or maaaring uh, hindi ka gano'ng approach. Sabi ko, baga, there's something in your personality that uh, that needs to know or that needs to be cared of. Once you said naman, light. Uh, light, personality, maaaring ikaw yung uh, type of person na mabait, uh, madaling lapitan. That is the weight. Okay? So these are the discussions of the characteristics of the living for the Indians. Next up, Indus River. Indus River is one of the longest uh, river in Asia. 
they believe that being Hindu is a sign of glorious. We'll uh, discuss this on uh, later on on the next slides. So here it is. So yung Indus River class, ito siya. Siya ang siya ang uh, nasa gitna ng Pakistan at ng India. It's from the Arabian Sea, if you would notice. This blue line from Arabian Sea going to the uh, land of China, that is what we call the Indus River. So there are two countries being divided by the Indus River. It only means one thing. Ang Indus River ang pinakamalaking bagay na pinagkukunan ng, ng agricultural source of the Indians, of the people from Pakistan and from India. Kung baga, dito sila nag, uh, dito nanggagala yung kanilang, yung kanilang source ng agricultural uh, farming in this river. Okay? So, and also in this river, also called as a Sindhu River or Abasin, Abasin River, is a major south flowing river in South Asia. The total length of the river is 3,180 kilometers, which makes, makes it one of the longest rivers in Asia. Now, yung bagat na isamang Indus River sa literature, yun ay dahil ang Indus River nga ang pinakamalaking uh, ang pinakamalawak at pinakamahaba at pinakamalaking uh, ilog sa buong uh, ang isa sa, pinaka, sa buong Asia at ito na sa India. Kumbaga, napakadaming kwento ang nabuo sa pamamagitan ng ay, na, na nabuo inspired by the Indus River. Isa pa, the flowing of Indus River for the Hinduism, they believe that as the water flows, same goes with our, with our belief, with our personality. Kung baga, kailangan na tayo bilang tao, yung ating sarili at yung ating paniniwala, kailangan dumadali na parang tubig patungo sa langit. Kung baga, kung baga we, must, we must not have hate in our heart. Our belief, our... Uh, our faith to God should be flowing continuously like the Indus River. Okay, and for them to believe in God, dapat daw, alam mo, alam mo yung tatlong bagay na to. Unang-una, the jiana, which means knowledge, karunungan. Ano yung alam mo or what you know? Pangatlo, uh, bhakti or devotion, which means how you act. Papano ka makitungo, paano ka kumilos bilang tao. At pangatlo, karma. Ito yung, ang karma is kung, kung ano yung, yung kalalabasan ng mga ginagawa mo bilang tao. So, knowledge, devotion, direct action, or the dhyana, bhakti, and karma. These are the things that an Indian should, be, should remember in order to attain the goodness of God. Okay. Uh, also, this knowledge is refers to our salvation. Kung baga, uh, kung baga sa atin, uh, for example, sa, sa, ating, sa ating Christians, we have the Ten Commandments of God. Kapag pag sinunod natin yung lahat ng nasa Ten Commandments of God, our souls will be saved once we die. Same thing with the idea of the, uh, the Hinduism. If you follow these three, you, your souls will be saved. It says here that salvation is not achieved by action, but by knowledge or realization. Knowing and believing are different from each other. So if you're going to uh, give an example with this, with this, uh, the, uh, with this definition, para ano yan, kunwari, uh, sorry, uh, halimbawa sa ating mga katoliko o sa ating mga kristyano, we are going to, uh, we are going to church every Sunday or we are attending church services every Sunday. So, ano para daw ma, ma save mo yung kaluluwa mo from committing sins and from, uh, so, and of course, uh, to save our souls. Uh, dapat daw, uh, you must go to church. Hindi dahil sa, you are obliged to go to church. Dahil sabi ng nanay mo, kailangan mo magpunta ng church every Sunday kahit na labag sa loob mo. 
Kasi pag saan na gusto mo mall But you are going to church because you are obliged. It is your duty to go to church. So you will not be safe from that. But you must go to church. You must pray to God because you want it. Because you believe that there is God, that you, that you are a human being. And you must give praise to the Lord. That is salvation. So, siya ang definition ng salvation. Parang it almost has the same idea with us, di ba? Uh, wag kang parang do not attend church service or holy mass every Sunday if your mind and if your mind and heart is not prepared. Kasi, kasi para ka lang tumambay sa simbahan. So, kailangan kung ikaw ay pupunta ng simbahan every Sunday, kailangan yung puso mo, yung utak mo at puso mo hinahanda mo. Kung baga, handa kang makipag handa kang makipag-usap kay God once na pumasok ka sa simbahan. Okay? So, especially for the Catholics, we are receiving communion, di ba? Yung eh, yung uh, small bread na 'yon, yung uh, yung iba sa atin kapag magre-receive ng communion, Parang wala lang, parang alam mo yung 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 ni-receive na is tinabas sa tindahan. So, there's no preparation. The the very reason why communion is at the middle or oh, sorry, almost at the end of the Holy Mass because uh, the priest is preparing the souls of the person before giving out the holy the holy host for the communion kasi we believe that that in that small bread it is the body and blood of Jesus Christ so bago mo siya kainin kailangan mo nang i-prepare sarili mo so you must attend the holy mass starting from the beginning up until the the end or the communion Kumbaga, hindi ka daw pwedeng umattend ay humingi ng communion kapag hindi mo na simulan yung misa. So, if you want to uh, to take communion, you must attend the whole Holy Mass from the beginning. That's the idea of the the uh, Catholic religion or for us Christianity. That idea is almost the same as the salvation idea for the Indians. It says here that there is no devil in Indian literature. God makes something bad to you and you to teach you a lesson. So, walang masama daw na, na ginawa ang mundo o na ginawa ang Diyos o walang masama sa mundong to. Lahat ng bagay ay may dahilan. Maaaring pangat ng ugali ng kaibigan mo o ng kapatid mo o ng, na, na, o ng, o ng sino man sa paligid mo, maaaring pangat yung mga nangyayari sa iyo. Hindi yan dahil sa it is It is uh, brought about by the devil, but it happens because it needs you to teach a lesson, di ba? Ah, di ba sabi ko kanina, hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon maganda ang buhay na na mararanasan mo. Hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon sa sabi ng Indian literature, not at all times maganda ang takbo ng buhay mo. May mga pagkakataon na uh, na ikaw ay dadaan sa pagsubok at you need to Uh, take risk, you need to face those challenges. Diba yung weight saka heavy? Yung kanina discuss natin. Okay. Next up. Life. Life is world is just one. They, they, they are of the same information or the same meaning for the Indian or for the Hinduism. Sa buh- ang buhay daw natin is could be impermanent or illusory. Or illusory. Ano ang sabihin nun? Um, kung ikaw bilang tao ay naniniwala ka na you believe that you are created by God, you have life. Okay? Pero kung sakaling ikaw bilang tao hindi ka naniniwala na na, na, na ginawa ka ng, ng Panginoon, ang ibig sabihin ay sa kalamang ilusyon sa mundong to. Kumbaga, you are not existing sa mundo because you have no belief. Nakuha po ba? So, yan ang, sabihin, yan ang ibig sabihin ng life for the Hindu religion. Actually, it can also be uh, be connected with our religion. Next up is, uh, the, as I mentioned a while ago, there's also uh, so the for uh, to balance in the duality, uh, there is a social certification or the four-case system sa India. What are those? Itong... Uh, 
case system to class, ito yung pagkakaiba-iba ng estado ng buhay ng mga Indians. Kung baga sa atin, sa Pilipinas, meron tayong uh, uh, rich kid o, o mga mayayaman nasa middle, which is tayo, at yung mga mahihirap. Okay? So, for them, they have four. Unang-una, yung pinaka-pagkakatiwalaan, uh, the people who has the highest position in their country, they call it as Brahmins. Brahmins, ito yung mga pare, mga scholars, mga rulers, yung mga kings, queens, mga teachers. Uh, sila yung mga tao na nagtuturo o nagbibigay ng direksyon sa mundo at sa tao. They, are, they, they have the highest state sa India. They, they call it as Brahmins. Second to Brahmins is the Kshatriyas. These are the businessmen o yung mga taong gumagawa ng paraan para umikot ang mundo o yung mga nagnanegosyo. Pangatlo ay yung Vaisha o Vaishas. These are yung mga taong nagtatanggol sa mga tao or the soldiers, the policemen. Next one is the Sudra or Sudras actually in, the, in other books. Sudras, these are the people who serve the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, and the Vaishas, or simply workers or slaves. Okay? So once you said Purusha, it is called man, a man who believes in God. However, the gods and goddesses of Hinduism has 300 identities. We say behind, meron silang 300 na Dios na sinasamba. Unlike sa atin, we only have Jesus, di ba? Jesus who was the Son of God and was blessed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, commonly, we believe in uh, Jesus, uh, God the Father, His Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. For Catholics, we also believe with Mama Mary, saints, angels. But for uh, for the Indians, they uh, they they are worshipping 300 gods and goddesses. Let's try to uh, take a look with, with them one by one later on. Okay, next up. So, Nirvana. Nirvana is this is the highest state of goodness. Kung baga, once you said Nirvana, kung, uh, maaari ano yan, uh, kung, sa, kung sa tao, ito yung ito yung rurok ng kagandahang asal mo. Pag namatay ka naman, ito yung parang langit na pupuntahan mo na, na magbibigay sa iyo ng, ng final judgment. Okay? And moksha, ito yung process ng reincarnation. So, ang, ang ibig sabihin, ang mga Indians o mga Hinduists, they, they believe with the other life. Kung baga na, naniniwala sila na muli silang mabubuhay after nilang mamatay. Depende kung paano sila nabuhay. Let's have that later on. So, Atman is ito. Um, habawa, kapag, kapag ako namatay, yung aking Atman, yung aking soul, will be, uh, will be, uh, will be born or will be reincarnated. Ngayon, uh, yung aking kaluluwa na yon would either be uh, would uh, would receive either be uh, sorry would receive karma at yung karma ma receive ng kaluluwa ko maaring good karma or bad karma karma is how you act as a people iba yung karma na paniniwal natin sa Pilipinas kasi sa ating mga Pilipino pag sinabi natin karma parang laging masama ang impact Diba? But for the Hinduism, pag sinabi natin karma, it means it's, it is either be good or bad karma. So pag namatay yung tao, yung kaluluwa niya will receive either good or bad karma depende kung paano siya nabuhay, kung ano yung uri ng buhay na meron siya bago siya namatay. So kapag ang kaluluwa nakareceive ng good karma, they would be faster in reaching nirvana. Ibig sabihin, mas mabilis maproseso yung kanyang yung kanyang uh, yung kanyang kaluluwa papunta sa nirvana or sa langit. Pero pag sinabi natin bad karma, medyo mabagal yung process niya para makarating sa langit. Okay? At pag yung kaluluyo, pag yung kaluluwa o yung atma nakarating na ng langit, it will uh, there would be a final judgment doon sa uh, tao na yon, doon sa buhay ng tao na yon. Tapos doon na malalaman 
kung paano siya mag-undergo ng process of moksha or kung paano siya muling mabubuhay. Ang sabi sa isang librong nabasa ko, once we said, if you receive good karma when you die, kapag nabuhay kang uli, magiging maganda yung, yung next life mo. Kung baga, halimbawa, kung tsaka ka ngayon, maaaring pag pero na napakabait mo, napakamutulungin mo na buhay ka, sa so next life mo, maaaring napakaganda mo na. And then, kapag naman sinabing bad karma, ito yung, uh, ito yung, uh, uh, ito yung karma kung saan, sa, sa, sa next life mo, they believe na kapag daw bad karma ang na-receive mo, sa next mong life, is magiging, i, uh, ikaw ay magiging isang hayop magiging isang animal depende dun sa bigat ng karma mo o ng uh, sa bigat ng kasalalang nagawa mo bago ka namatay. Okay? Next up is the four goals of Hindu life. Ano naman yon? So, ito ngayon, uh, be, before mamatay, kailangan daw yung buhay mo ay umikot sa teachings ng, ng iyong simbahan. And for Hinduism, meron tayong apat na objectives. For for the diba for Christianity, meron ta we must follow the ten commandments of God for us to become a better person and to save our souls when we die, diba? For for Christians, for Hindus, they have four goals. Una, ang dharma, pagiging mabuti, artha, ah uh, ito ay kung paano kung mabubuhay bilang tao, di ba? Para ano 'yan? Uh, mabubuhay ka, uh, hindi pwedeng maging mahirap ka habang buhay. Kailangan gumawa ka ng paraan para mabuhay bilang tao. Kung maga make yourself rich while you are living. Okay? And pangatlo, kema or the physical pleasure, uh, how you deal with the physical pleasure. Diyan papasok yung ating sex. Okay? Next one is the moksha. Is uh, you must attain, uh, you must always think that at the end of the day, you are doing uh, all these things for you to have a good karma and to have a good reincarnation at the end. So ito yung four teachings. The dharma, the artha, kama, and the moksha. And also, Aside from the teachings that they are receiving from the Hinduist priests, the uh, Indians are also receive uh, also uh, reading the uh, literatures or the Vedas. Vedas is one of the most read and the well-known literature in India. Once you see Veda, it means knowledge, karunungan, and there are four kinds of Veda. We have the Rig Veda. It means it. It, ang nilalaman ng Rig Veda ay mga himno at mga dasal. Sa Maveda, mga kanta at mga, mga song or praises for, for the Lord. Um, at Arva Veda, same as, almost the same as with Sa Maveda, but uh, it might contain uh, songs and praises to other gods as well. And the Yehor Veda, it is this it contains all the rituals traditions of sacrifices of the indians so these are the four vedas or the four knowledge of the indian or the indian literature and basically um hindi naman na uh, perfect ang tao so, uh, we will also be committing sin di ba so sabi nila pag daw ang tao ay nakagawa ng kasalanan sa so for the hinduism siya raw ay siya raw ay uh, na-impluwensyahan ni Rakshasa. Rakshasa. Si Rakshasa, kumbaga sa atin, si Satan, di ba? For Christians. Para siya yung king of all devils. For the Hinduism, they, they also have Rakshasa or the uh, demonic being for Hindu mythology. So meaning, uh, maaaring uh, Uh, may uh, Hinduism religion or Buddhism religion ang India, they also had the Hindu literature kung saan ang kanilang relihiyon ay nagmula. Ang, ang, pag, ang pagbuo ng uh, Hinduism religion ay, may basihan, ay naging basihan din ang kanilang Hindu mythology. 
Okay, and here it is. Let's have one of the longest epic poetry in the world. Sa to sa mga kilalang uh, panatikan sa buong mundo, we have the Ramayana and Mahabharata. It is a longest epic poetry, one of the longest epic poetry sa buong mundo. So, uh, aside from Vedas, ang mga Indian din ay kilala sa Ram Ramayana and Mahabharata. Ang Ramayana ay sinulat ni Maharishi Valmiki wherein its original version was written in 5th to 4th century BCE. Uh, it has 50,000 lines in 7 books. Just imagine, it has 50,000 lines which was divided into 7 books. It tells the story of Brahma, an incarnation or avatar of the Hindu preserver god Vishnu. Vishnu is the god of preservation. Kumbaga, siya yung taga-preserve ng lahat ng meron sa mundo, including human. Whose wife Sita is abducted by the de demon king of Blanca, Ravana. Dharma, it means righteousness. It means duties and obligations in each case. Ano yung katungkulan mo bilang isang tao, bilang, uh, bilang isang tao at bilang isang miyembro ng case system. So, ang isa sa mga nilalaman ng Ramayana and Mahabharata, una-una is yung Dharma, yung iyong katungkulan bilang isang miyembro ng case system. Pangalawa, yung relationship or connection ng four goals, yung Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Next, is yung kahalagahan, the importance of one being wed to only one wife. Kung saan, yung kahalagahan, yung kahalagahan ng pagkakaroon lamang ng isang asawa. So, ang Indian ay hindi sila into uh, getting married to one or uh, to two or more wives. They only get married to one wife. Okay? Adherence to truth and the need to honor one word. So, nabi sabihin niya, kailangan daw lahat ng mga sinasabi, sinasabi mo ay pawang katotohanan lamang. At pag may sinabi ka, kailangan gawin mo. That is honoring one's word. Kailangan pag ang tagpuan alas tres ng hapon, dapat pag alas tres ng hapon, dumating na kayo sa tagpuan. Ha? Kung, baga, kung ano yung sinabi mo, kailangan mo siyang panindigan. Respecting father's word of honor, they believe to the power of the father of the house. Ang mga ama ang pinaka makapangyarihan sa loob ng isang bahay. The futility of listening to vicious counsel. Ano ba sabihin yan? If you did something wrong and if you are being counseled, you must listen. If you, counseled meaning you are being reprimanded, you are being uh, counseling, ikaw ay pinagsasabihan ng mga dapat mong gawin. You must follow daw. And then, not accepting anybody coming in an unjust way. Ano yun? Huwag kang basta-basta maniniwala sa kung sino-sino nang, nang wala namang katuturan. Especially kung ang tao na yun ay nags, nagsasabi lamang ng mga bagay na maaaring makasira sa pagkatao mo. And next, the futility of getting swayed by dubious distractions. Ano yun? Yung mabilis kang ma-attract sa mga bagay-bagay na walang halaga sa mundo. Okay? So, yun yung nilalaman yung mga teachings ng Ramayana at Mahabharata. Okay. Also, sa Ramayana, uh, the critics, they have, they, they tried na na differentiate yung yung uh, yung customs or traditions ng mga Pilipino at ng mga Indian. Kasi sa ating mga Pilipino, we always have this love and family first. Kumbaga, uh, minsan, di ba, as, I mean, uh, sa lahat ng ginagawa natin, we always have this idea na I want to help my family, I want to help my parents, I want, I want to give, I want to give to my family. Di ba? Para, we always have that. I want to work because I want to help my parents because I want to give for, for my family. Ganyan tayo mga Pilipino. Kapag naman mga Indians, they have this idea na if you have the power to work, do it and become a leader of your own house. Kung, baga, kung meron ka lang kakayahang magtrabaho, magtrabaho ka at kailangan uh, paghirapan mong maging isang mga pangyariha, uh, maging isang uh, ruler or ama ng sarili mong tahanan. So, siya yung difference. Uh, kumbaga, uh, 
in a totality sa ating mga Pilipino, we are more on unity and love palagi, di ba? Sa Dharma, they are as uh, sa India, they are into uh, parang laging uh, being rulers, being uh, bilang sinong pinakamataas being ruler. Okay? So, these are the other teachings that we can uh, see from the Indian literatures. Uh, emotions or rasa. Kung ano, yung kung ano yung ginagawa mo daw, yun na nararamdaman mo. Kasi parang imposible naman na gumawa ka ng isang bagay na hindi mo siya naramdaman. Kung baga, uh, naramdaman mo siya, pinag-isipan mo, kaya nagawa mo yung bagay na yun. Okay? So example, halimbawa, uh, uh, nagmahal ka, ng tao dahil yun ang naramdaman ang, ang naramdaman ng puso mo. Okay? Kisa gotami, ito yung you have uh, life is something you accept. It is something you should know. Ito yung uh, kisa gotami, ito yung you must accept your life whatever it is, whoever you are. Kumbaga, kung ano yung buhay na meron ka, you must accept that. Okay? Because uh, walang sino man ang maaaring magbago ng buhay mo kundi ikaw lamang. Kaya di ba isa sa mga goals ng, ng Indian is the uh, artha or yung uh, materialistic. Di ba? Ibig sabihin, kailangan mong gumawa ng isang bagay na magbibigay saysay o magbibigay halaga sa buhay mo. Uh, also, uh, in uh, Kisagotami, you must know the, the virtues o yung mga kagandahang asal. Virtue is in the form of pain. People see you an incompassive person because you are struggling. But you are struggling because you need to learn. Kung baga, maaaring makita ng mga taong naghihirap ka, mahirap ka, naghihirap ka. Yun ay dahil you are do. Ah, yun ay dahil hindi ka mahirap. Kundi you are doing something para umunlad yung buhay mo. Kung magay lahat tayo mahirap na ipinanganak and we must do something para umulad yung buhay natin. And also like for the, for the Christians, Indians also believe that death is universal. If you are experiencing pain, everybody does. So kung ikaw ay mamatay, lahat ng tao mamatay. Kung ikaw ay nagmamahal, lahat ng tao ay magmamahal. Kung ikaw ay nahihirapan, lagi mong isipin na hindi lang ikaw naghihirap. Kundi lahat ng tao maaaring maranasan din o higit pa uh, uh, maranasan ang, ang pain na na-experience mo ngayon. They also have Panchatantra, which is mean, this is a collection of fables given to kings and princesses. Uh, the, the purpose is to teach them values, leadership, and governance. So, uh, Panchatantra is also one of the famous literature in India which contains all the different kinds of stories for the kings and princess para turuan sila kung paano mamuno sa kanilang lugar. And then if you would notice, uh, most women in India, they have this, parang dito sa kanilang noo, di ba? They, they are putting something on there. Hindi yun dahil... Uh, sa kanilang forehead, di ba? Musta dito, in between of their eyebrows, like in the figure. They are, they are putting that, hindi, hindi dahil sa uh, trip nilang ilagay yan. It has, uh, it, it symbols, uh, sorry, it symbolizes the beauty of a women or the highness of the women. So, meaning, uh, it meaning they are blessed by God to become a strong woman. Yun ang ibig sabihin nung, nung parang uh, earrings, ay, yung parang metal or, or palamuti na kanila nilalagay sa kanilang noo. They called it as kunkuni. Okay, yun dito sa noo nila. Okay, Shivas, he, he, he is one of the goddess of Indian dances. Kaya if you would notice, uh, kung makapanood kayo ng mga Indian movies, They, uh, most uh, Indian movies or the uh, Bollywood movies, they are into, uh, laging may kantahan at may sayawan, di ba? Because they believe to the power of dance to attract good uh, or positive vibes. 
So, uh, if you're sad, try to sing and dance to get a, a good vibe. So, yun yung uh, dahilan bakit sila lagi sumasayaw. And also, singing and dancing, dancing is also to worship or yeah, uh, to give praise to their God, Shivas. Okay? That ends our discussion for the Indian literature. So basically, if you, if you could be able to notice, once we said uh, Indian literature, ang, uh, ang isa sa mga pinanggagalingan ng kanilang, ng, uh, kanilang uh, panitikan ay ang relihiyon At ang relihiyon na ito ay, uh, ay binibigay sa tao para hubugin yung kanyang pagkatao. Kung baga, religion is the basis of the personality, of the attitude, of the uh, social life of the person. Okay? So, kagaya natin, sa Pilipinas, ang ating panatikan din is para humubog o para ipakita yung ganda ng mga, uh, ng, at, ng ganda ng kultura ng mga Pilipino o ng, uh, kung, an kung ano ang mga Pilipino, kung sino ang mga Pilipino. Di ba? Same thing with the Indian literature. Okay, so is there a question for this?